trendsetters, welcome to Learn Extra Live. I'm Kateho, in case you've forgotten after the very long week that I wasn't here. And this is Iti. Iti, how are you today? Hi, how are you? Great, thank Great. you. Hello to our viewers out there. So what are we doing today in Grade 10 Maths? Grade 10 Maths, we are going to uh, do Euclidean Geometry. Okay. And uh, that's focusing on the shapes and the properties of those shapes and the theorems. Okay. Yes, uh, we'll take it okay. from there. Okay, yeah. so you guys heard, yes. please call everyone in grade 10 that's doing mathematics because today Euclidean geometry is the topic. Mm -hmm. You can walk over to your board while Great. I let our viewers know about Thanks. our Facebook page. You guys know that you guys, you guys know that you must tune in every week, every every single week, and you must also log on to our Facebook page. Our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash learn extra, and we're also on Twitter, and our Twitter page is at learn extra. And obviously, you know that our show is sponsored by Liberty, so thank you to Liberty. And because it's Monday, we have some prizes. We have our Casio calculator as mm. well as our labeler. So make sure today you are the one and only best, best mindsetter because this is going to be your show to win. And of course, great tens, after a long week that I haven't been here, I love knowing about your last week as well as your weekend. So please, on the page, not only send questions and answers and everything, tell me about your weekend as well because I am so keen to know. Over to you, Iti. Thank you, Katleho. Yes, I did say we are doing Euclidean geometry today. And uh, what we will be interested in, because it's geometry, it's shapes, obviously, and properties of those shapes. Those shapes. And normally you go and also find uh, some kind of generalization about those shapes. Uh, theorems are basically generalization, generalization statements. All right, uh, I am going to focus on two things. I'm going to do classification of triangles and uh, properties of quadrilaterals. And you will notice that the language that I'll uh, stick to with will be the language of talking about sides and angles. And when I talk about sides, if I can you know, make a quick summary there, I'll be wanting to know whether sides are equal or you know, we, are they parallel? You know, that's the way we're going to use to uh, do our descriptions, uh, you know, I mean, uh, when we're describing the properties of a particular shape. All right, so that would be sides. And uh, what's another thing? Are they equal? Are they parallel? Now, another thing is uh, this sides, I will have to focus on whether they are adjacent or they are opposite. So that's the kind of language that I will use in describing the properties. So that was about sides. And another thing is angles. So about the angles, yes, you'll hear me talk about uh, opposite angles as well and adjacent angles. Let me just extend this a bit. So I will talk about adjacent and opposite angles. Again, the question will be whether they are e equal. Let's just get to that. Whether these angles are equal or, uh, yeah, typically whether they are supplementary. And supplementary, uh, some of you may know, supplementary suggests that the angles add up to 180 degrees. All right. And uh, there is another one that uh, you may have to note. Please take your pens. If you don't have a pen, go grab a pen and paper. There's a lot of notes to write here. So the other one is uh, angles could be, say, I mean, you could say they are, uh, what's the other one? Supplementary or complementary, yes. Complementary. When you say angles are complementary, it means they add up to 90 degrees. All right, it's just a few things that, uh, okay, another thing I think about the sides is that you could say 
the sides are parallel or perpendicular. If I can just add something there, perpendicular. Per okay, perpendicular. All right. So as we, you know, describe our prop, I mean, our, our, I mean, our, our different shapes, you'll notice that we'll stick to this language about the sides, the angles. Then another thing will be the. Uh, the diagonals. The diagonals will be interested in whether, you know, we've got uh, diagonals that bisect each other, and even then, do they bisect each other, just bisect each other, or do they bisect perpendicularly? That's another interesting thing. Uh, focus will be on bisecting. Bisecting each other, or one just bisecting the other, okay? And another thing, uh, will be symmetry. So when you look at your, sh uh, your shape, can you introduce lines that cut uh, that shape into two equal halves that can be, be folded over to overlap on each other? All right. So that's what sy symmetry is about there. Uh, I said I'm going to talk about specifically triangles and quadrilaterals. So regarding the triangles, I want to do classification. So I'm going to move to that. Now, there are two ways we are going to classify our triangles. We're going to classify our triangles according to the sides. Now, I said when you talk about the sides, we'll be talking about equality or, you know, uh, again, whether they, they, we're talking about opposite ones or whatever. So in this case, if we're talking about triangles, there is one triangle that I can pick on immediately here. Uh, it's called a scalene triangle. And I'm going to focus on sides. This particular triangle will look something like, let's say that, where the sides are not equal at all, and the angles are not equal at all. So there is no equal sides, there is no equal angles. OK, maybe I should write that. Uh, for a scalene, there is no equal sides or angles. Very important to remember that. So yes, again, we're talking about the sides and the angles. Right. And if I move one back, OK. So this one, we call it an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle, we're still classifying according to sides. Equilateral triangle will be that kind of triangle which has got equal sides. Equi, obviously, suggests that they are equal. Then lateral stands for sides, side. OK, so equilateral triangle, all the sides are equal, all right? And, uh, I can add that their opposite angles are also equal. So uh, if you will remember, maybe I should have mentioned, but that's part of the theorems. One of the things you will have to know is that if you have a triangle like A, B, C, the sum of angles in that triangle add up to 180. Again, this way, I mean, th th this uh, statement suggests that way we talked about earlier on called supplementary. So you could also say the angles in the triangle are supplementary. So that, let me put the caps here to distinguish this. So angles in the triangle equal to 180. So if you have an equal, equilateral triangle, all the angles are also equal. So that's equal to that, and that's equal to that. So this means that you have got three times 60 degrees. Each angle is 60 degrees. Okay. Or if you divide 180 by 3, you get uh, 60 degrees. All right. So that's about an equilateral triangle. And yeah, let's move on to the next one. An isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle uh, is a triangle with two sides equal. And the, opposite, the, the angles that are opposite to that are also 
equal. So this is another side which is not equal to the other two. So for isosceles triangle, uh, what did we say? Two sides equal, okay? And their opposite angles their opposite angles are equal. Right. Angles are equal. All right. So yes, I've marked them equal, that one, and that one. So just because it's opposite to that side, which is equal to the other one, the angles are equal. All right. And uh, if we move on to the next one, do you want to hold that? Yeah, sure. All right. So let's see. So we've done equilateral triangle, and we've done isosceles triangle. I have started with the uh, scalene triangle. Yes, I did move to that page. In that page, we said, yes, we've got the luxury of having you know, uh, sides being equal. In the other case, it was three sides equal. That was equilateral triangle. Then the second one, second one was two sides equal. This time, there's nothing equal. No equal sides, no equal angles. And there's not much I can say except to mark it like that. One, two, three. I could also mark that as one and two. And the sides are not equal. The angles are not equal. That's all I can say about the pro I mean that, that, that triangle. Right, let's move on to another type of classification where we're going to classify these triangles according to uh, angles. All right, so we will remember that an angle that is acute, so I'm starting here with an acute angle triangle. An angle that is acute is an angle, uh, if it is theta, it is an angle that is greater than zero degrees, but less than 90 degrees. All right, so if you have an acute angle triangle, then it becomes a triangle whose angles are all less than, I mean, between zero degrees and 90 degrees. There is no angle that is more than 90 degrees. So now we're going to use 90 degrees as a nice reference uh, to decide whether you know, you are, you've got an obtuse angle or an acute angle. All right, so that's acute angle triangle. Uh, what else could we say? So you could have acute angle triangle that has got equal sides or, because now if you think about the equilateral triangle, for instance, it's got 60, 60, 60 as the three angles. So it is, I mean, those angles are acute angles. So it is uh, an acute angle triangle, typically. So let's move on to the next one, uh, a right angle triangle. A right angle triangle will be an angle that, I mean, it will have an angle that is, uh, or specifically, theta will be equal to 90 degrees. So it's got one angle one angle equal to 90 degrees. There we go. And notice how we mark the 90 degrees angle. Whenever you, when, whenever you see a triangle with this you know, square corner there, you know that uh, you know, we're talking about, we're suggesting that that angle is 90 degrees. Okay, so this is a right angle triangle. You cannot have more than one right angle triangle in a triangle because uh, they must, the three angles must add up to 180. So you've got two of them equal to 90 degrees, so already it's 180, you can't have the third angle, except if you theoretically or by imagination say the third angle is zero degrees. All right, so that's a right angle triangle, and there's not much I can say there except maybe it's the right place to talk about one other property that is important for, tri for triangles. Uh, earlier on I, talk about, I talked about angles that add up to 180 degrees. That is specifically about angles. Now, I can introduce something that talks about sides only. 
And when we have a triangle like that, and let's say it's A, B, C, and let me measure this side and find it to be A units, measure the other side and find it to be B units, like B meters or whatever, and measure that side and find it to be C. So uh, there is a square relation uh, in a, or, you know, about the size of a right angle triangle. All right. So we're going to say, and again, this is called, it's got a special name. It's called the hypotenuse. Some of you may know that already. So depending on which angle I'm talking about, this could be adjacent and that opposite, but I'm interested in that one. So the hypotenuse is actually the largest side in a triangle. And the largest side in a right angle triangle, obviously the largest angle in a right angle triangle is the 90 degrees. So you just look at that angle, which is opposite to 90 degrees. It's the one that will be the largest. So in this case, the square of that side will be equal to uh, the, the sum of the squares of the other sides. All right. Uh, if I could just reproduce this triangle, uh, sm make it smaller. So what I'm talking about is if you were to have a square uh, there and another square there and another square there. So this, this one will be equal to uh, the sum of the other two. All right. So I'm not going to prove that now. Uh, there is a proof for that. So that's one thing you could say about sides only. Yes, we did concentrate on sides. Earlier on, we talked about angles only. All right, so that's just one way. Okay, we talked about an acute angle triangle. This time, it's a right angle triangle. Uh, thirdly, we'll go into an obtuse angle triangle. All right, let me just move one back. Um, all right, before I talk about ambiguous cases for, for triangles, I did say obtuse angle triangle. Um, obtuse angled. So take note, this is now where your angle uh, is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So it can be more than one angle. So if it's, it's an angle that is going to be between 90 and 180 degrees, we call it an obtuse angle. So there has to be only one angle. One angle for an obtuse angle triangle, if I can draw it quickly there. So it's an, a triangle like that, where that particular angle, it's an angle that is greater, angle uh, more than OK, let's just call it an, uh, an angle that is obtuse. Uh, angle that is obtuse, OK. So you've got only one angle there. One angle is obtuse. All right. Uh, what more could I say about not much, really? So I have talked about the triangles in terms of sides. And I have, uh, yeah, focused on uh, classifying them using the angles. And uh, another thing I said was just to talk about angles only. And I said the sum of angles in a triangle are supplementary, which means they add up to 180. And uh, I talked about sides only. And I said there is a square relation. The hypotenuse, which is the larger side, the square of that side is called the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Yes, the familiar name for that uh, probably is what you call the theorem of Pythagoras. All right. Dimitri, do you want to go to a quick break before uh -huh. you carry on? We could do that. This yes. is the perfect time, eh? Yes. Okay, guys, we're going <laughs> to go for a really quick break. If you do have any questions on what ET has gone through, please don't fear sending them through right in this break. See you now now. <laughs> 